Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, I have an absolute pleasure to present a watch that is three things rare in combination. This Audemars Piguet is vintage complicated and not a royal oak. We are, of course, discussing the Audemars Piguet WTM Perpetual Calendar Chronograph. Uh, this model with a C-series serial number uh, dating back to the mid-1980s, likely 85-86, and it was considered to be a flagship piece at Audemars Piguet at the time. The watch is 40 millimeters in diameter in rose gold, 12.6 millimeters thick, a nice compact and vintagey 44 millimeters from lug to lug, and 20 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. In full rose gold, the watch wears well on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist because it is so short from lug to lug. 44 millimeters is almost like a 36 millimeter datejust. It really is quite compact for a 40 millimeter watch. And though it's not thin, it does feature a dramatically stepped pagoda-like case profile that allows the sleeve to ramp up and over the side of it. So it will fit beneath a dress cuff or sleeve. The timepiece has a wonderful thin upscale, large rectangular scale alligator leather. Audemars Piguet factory strap. You can see brand new calfskin on the bottom, gloss black on the top, and it features a sheer cut side showing the layers of leather and a monotone black stitch. We have a matching AP rose gold pin buckle, and the case is largely case. By that I mean the lugs are extremely spare. Back in the 1980s, 40 millimeters for a dress watch was actually quite bold. It was considered large. So to pare down the overall size, AP reduced the span of the lugs and then turned them downward almost 90 degrees from the horizontal of the case band. You could see a gentle contrast of polished and satinated elements uh, to break up what was considered to be quite a massive case by the standards of its time. We have pusher correctors for the calendar complication, and you can see that this is a modular complication on several levels. At the bottom, we have the JLC 889 base. One level up, you can see the pushers for the chronograph, and then one level up from that on top, you can see the modular perpetual calendar system. We'll break all that down in just a minute. Note the use of unsigned vintage style crown right here. I really like that. The bezel is stacked, again, pagoda style, with several domed steps, and then a satination circular across the uppermost with a polished flange between that satination and the crystal. Audemars Piguet, rather than on the dial, has been engraved onto the bezel, a lovely treatment. The dial is best described as somewhere between silver and champagne. It, it does have a slight off-white tinge to it. It has a vintage-like feature, too, with a tachymeter printed on the dial. In the early to mid-20th century, that's generally how a tachymeter would be included on a watch would be incorporated on the dial rather than the bezel. So you can use that tachymeter in conjunction with the chronograph to gauge the speed of an object, such as a car over a kilometer. We have a beautifully symmetrical dial with a perpetual calendar, moon phase, and chronograph. It has four sunken registers, each with a polished rose gold chaptering. We have lovely rounded and polished baton style hour and minute hands and a red lacquered chronograph seconds hand. We also have red lacquered hands for chronograph hours and chronograph minutes, which are coaxial with the day and the month as well as the leap year phase. So you can see quite a bit going on in a very compact package. It has a beautiful bilateral symmetry as well as cruciform symmetry. So if you cut it top to bottom or side to side, you get a mirror image in all cases. And look carefully, you can see applied rose gold indices, uh, upscale luxurious touch. Now it is a perpetual calendar. It doesn't have to be corrected until the year 2100. And the moon phase is geared so it requires correction only once every 122 years. So this can deal with irregular length months. It can deal with leap years. It uses a Dubois de Praz module for its complications. And you can see because the DD module uses a vertical clutch for engagement, the chronograph starts without any jump, stagger, or extraneous displacement. Because it is a JLC 889 base, it also features a stop seconds function. So you can set this watch precisely to a reference time. And if you look very closely, you can see there is a constant seconds hand up at 
12 o'clock. Flip it over, not a whole lot to see. You can see a very vintagey snap case back and our lovely pre-1995 Helvetic head hallmarks. Inside the watch, the base is the JLC 889, and then we have Dubois de Praz complication modules on top. Dubois de Praz is based out of Lelou. It is a uh, complication module specialist that builds high-end modular complications for many haute de gamme brands, among others. So what we have here is called by JLC, the 2126 base, that is the JLC base, and then 2839 is the name of the Perpetual Calendar Chronograph module. Back at the time this watch was made, Audemars Piguet actually owned 40% of Jaeger Le Coult. So not only was this considered to be a in-house collaboration between two companies that were part of the same business operation, but it harked back to the origins of the relationship between Le Coult and Audemars Piguet, uh, which can be traced all the way back to the late 19th century. So having a JLC base movement in an Audemars Piguet complicated watch is a well-established tradition. The movement is a bi-directional winder with a 38 to 40 hour power reserve, a 4 hertz beat rate. Combine the module with the base, you get 51 joules, and then it has a five position adjustment, which is nice because that is the chronometer and high horology standard. So this is a true high horology, comprehensively adjusted movement in a high horology, comprehensively thought out watch. And in its day, it would have been 30 meters water resistant, but being vintage today, I would implore you to simply skip submergence. There are other APs for that. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.